Hi everyone, I'm FM Greeno and welcome along to episode 31 of the Greeno Tour. This is my FM21 European Journeyman, where I can only manage a team that I've seen play live or been to their stadium for some reason. As you can see, we're currently sat third in the championship, and today we travel to Crystal Palace for a Boxing Day match. We were last together for a game up at Preston North End where we came out on the end of a 1-0 defeat, unfortunately. But since then, things have actually picked up a little bit. So following that, we travelled down to Swansea and picked up a pretty decent one-all draw. We took the lead, Swansea equalised fairly soon afterwards. Draw was about a fair result. We then had two home games. We took on Stoke, beat them 2-0 and beat Derby 4-0. We made a bit of a change in this game and put Ilanga up top and... Uh, Balogun out on the left uh, so basically swapping their positions around and it seemed to pay off so we've been experimenting with that a little bit over the last few weeks we travelled to West Brom, they're a decent side of course and unfortunately they beat us 2-0 then we played Sheffield Wednesday but 4 past them we beat Peterborough 1-0 away and our last game, probably a little bit disappointing, we had much the better of the game it was a one-all draw against Rotherham we just couldn't seem to put them away as I say, today is Boxing Day, we're off to Crystal Palace, but let's go and see what Santa is bringing us for the new year. As you can see, we have five transfers lined up, all coming in on the 2nd of January. Uh, Jameson, I think we already spoke about, Brazilian centre-half coming through. Look at the physicals for a 19-year-old kid, they're really, really good. Uh, he's brave, his work rate is great, tackling superb. A little bit of work to do with heading and marking, but he's only a youngster, so that will come in time. And looking forward to him coming in. We've got four more that we've lined up. Ken Bowery is coming in from TNS. We're getting him on a free transfer. And again, look at some of the qualities this guy has got. 20 determination, 19 teamwork, 16 work rate. Really decent physicals. Again, some work to do in the technical areas, but he's a ball-winning midfielder, so you're not expecting him to be a peer low level of technicality. So I'm excited about him coming in. Mario Jorge is a young winger. Not quite to the same standard as the others, I don't think, but decent enough. Uh, he's got great pace and acceleration, which I really like in my wide players. And a little bit of work to do in a lot of areas, but again, only 18 years of age, so plenty of time to work on that. Another 18-year-old coming in from Portugal, João Santos. And my idea with him is to train him on this side. So we can use him as an inverted winger or you know, inside forward, that kind of role. Again, good pace and acceleration, agility, decent dribbling. I think this kid's got a lot of potential. The one I'm probably most excited about, and the one I'm having to pay most money for, is this kid. Zhang Likun. He's a 19-year-old Australian, presumably with Chinese heritage. And look at this, some of the uh, attributes he's got here. Now, he's not even fully scouted, but there were a few other teams sniffing around. And I really just wanted to get him in. But if we take a look here at the sort of positions he's going to play, he either is a central midfielder or as an attacking midfielder. We'd probably use him as an advanced playmaker in either kind of role. But some of the things you can see here already is decision-making we know is at least a 14. Teamwork at least a 15. Technique 16. I think this kid's going to be a star. Talking of younger players, there are a couple already within our ranks that I'm pretty excited about for the future. A couple of lads who are out on loan at the moment. Chief amongst them is this guy, Juan Hernandez. He's on loan at Newport County. He's a goalkeeper. And look at some of his attributes already. He's 18 years of age. He's already considered to be a championship level goalkeeper. So I think next season he could well be our backup keeper. Or we might send him out on loan at a higher level uh, just to get some more minutes into him. It all very much depends on whether we have a reserve team next season or not. We don't currently, which is why I've sent so many youngsters out on loan. So I'm excited about him. Vaughan Roscoe as well, a left back. Some work to do on his technicals. He's out on loan at Yeovil. But again, you look at his physicals for an 18-year-old kid and some of his mentals. There's a lot of potential in this guy, I think. One of the reasons that I'm really keen to bring some of these youngsters in is we have a couple of the players getting on a little bit and coming towards the end of their contracts. So Luke Berry, for example, very, very good servant to the club, more than 250 appearances. He's 32 years old, out of contract next summer. 
and he's on 15 grand a week. And to be honest, I think that's money that could probably be better spent. Uh, similarly, James Collins here, he's 34 years of age, another great servant to the club, more than 300 appearances under his belt. Um, but he's on 13 grand a week. He's not happy that he's not been involved very much this season and has asked for a move. So I think it's important that we try and get some of these higher earning, older players off the books. We can bring some of these potential youngsters through. Anyway, Palace today, like I said before, this is the team we're going with. O'Leary, he's been very, very good for us in goal this season. Back four of Barrington Brown, Cumetio, Lockyer and Bree. Dewsbury Hall, who's been a bit of a revelation since he came in. He's in that ball-winning midfielder role. And Panzu and Morel in the middle of midfield. Balogun is playing out wide today. Mahoney out on the right. And Ilanga up top. Let's get to Selhurst Park and see how we do. Well, hopefully the boys have been laying off their uh, Christmas pudding. And they're in decent shape for this game. I think overall, I have to be fairly pleased with how things have been going recently. We've um, we've looked all right. We've actually been playing quite nicely. This counter-attacking system that I've got seems to be suiting us quite well. We soak up quite a bit of pressure, then hit teams on the break. We've got a lot of pace up front, certainly in that sort of front three. So that seems to work quite well. Looks like we've got an opportunity here from a corner. Here goes Balogun. It's gone in. That's an own goal, is it? Yeah. Joe Worrell own goal. We'll take that, though. I quite like these little short corner routines. Quite often you'll see them go horribly wrong. You know, they'll play the ball from the corner to the guy sort of close to them. And he'll just either boot it out or pass it straight back to them while they're offside. But when they do come off, they come off very, very nicely. So yeah, so like I was saying, overall form has been decent. That last game against Rotherham, I don't know how we didn't win that really. Um... Obviously, we went down very, very early in the game, the second minute. Um, but we came back, and we're looking pretty good. And we absolutely smashed them all over the park for the last half an hour, but just could not find the breakthrough. Here comes Ilanga. He's going for goal. Good save by Bentley. You can see there, we won the ball, and we get forward pretty quickly. Uh, decent dribbling, decent pace and acceleration in those wide areas. Really, really just paying dividends. So... Just five minutes to go here till half time. We're one up. I think the game is probably fairly even. So for us to be a goal up, I'm really, really happy with. It looks like Palace have one opportunity here though before half time. Can we get in and disrupt them before they get an opportunity on goal? No. No, we can't. <laughs> They're going for Palace just before half time. Well, I was saying it was a pretty even game, so. Only got myself to blame for that, I guess. Bit of a scrappy goal. Very fortunate that the ball fell back to him eight yards out, but tucked it away nicely, I guess. So, that alters the way I was going to approach the half-time team talk anyway. I was going to tell him that I was delighted with the performance so far, but I think we're going to stick with the we owe Crystal Palace after what happened in our last match. That's got everybody motivated. Let's get them out for the second half. Condition on everybody looks pretty good. Oh, goodness me. We very, very nearly conceded straight after half time there. So Palace have had slightly better of the, the chances by the looks of it. Their XG is a little better than ours, but not by a huge amount. Mahoney, it seems, is starting to get a little bit tired. He's here on the ball. Finds Ilanga. Pretty isolated out there on the right, though. Manages to beat one man, but can't beat the second. This could be a counter-attack opportunity for Palace, but no. Dewsbury Hall doing his job there. Gets in and wins the ball. Then we give it away again. Great challenge by Mpanzu. So Brown on the ball now. Balogun with a little bit of space to run into. Finds Morel. Don't do anything stupid here, boys. Here's Barrington Brown back into Morel. Knocking it around quite nicely here. And Panzu goes all the way across the other side of the park to Mahoney. Bree with a great ball in. Oh, what an opportunity. Balogun just nods it wide. That was nice football right across the park there. So we're up to the hour mark. Looks like another uh, highlight building here. Lockyer to Bree into Morel. Dewsbury Hall. 
coming out to the left hand side that goes back to Cometio. nice short passing around here We've got Brie on the overlap there on the right comes back to Dewsbury Hall are we going to come over to the left hand side now no we're going to try and play through the middle Balogun what a goal offside how is that offside oh we don't even get to see the highlight or a, you know, a replay that looked like a good goal to me I'm not sure about that one at all okay well we've got about 20 minutes to go time for me to make a couple of changes i'll be back in a moment so i've made a couple of changes in personnel as you can see here collins and divine have come on for morel and balogun and we've gone two up top for the last 15 minutes or so here and mahoney is wrecked so maybe we'll think about taking him out too that's not a bad idea we can bring Declan Glass on. He can play out on the right-hand side. So we've got 10 minutes to try and find a winner here. Here's Glass with a corner. Oh, has that hit the post from Cumetio? Divine here at the back post. Oh, Bentley with a good save. Whew. Good opportunity there for us. Sadly, we couldn't take it. So five minutes to go. I think a draw probably is about a fair result when you look at the overall stats, although our XG has improved dramatically in the second half. But there we are. That's not bad. A one-all draw away at Palace. As you can see, the point we picked up in that game today has kept us in third place. At Reading won, so they've gone a little bit further clear of us, but West Ham only managed a draw. So both of them sit five points clear of us. To be honest, I'm not really expecting to be able to catch them, but you never know. Uh, but we do have a little bit of a gap. Six points between us and Stoke down in seventh. We're exactly halfway through the season. So I think we were predicted originally to finish around 18th, 19th. Um, we're on 44 points now. Whether we can actually match that in the second half of the season and end up on 88 points, I don't know. So I'm certainly pleased to be well clear of this little spot down here with the relegation teams. In terms of the schedule, we do have a cup game coming up in the middle of January. We don't know our opponents yet. For some reason, the, the cup this year is pushed back a little bit. Normally, you'd expect the third round to be on this sort of early weekend in January. But the second round is going to be taking place then. Where I think we might come back, possibly Aston Villa, possibly Barnsley. Transfer window closes, I think, on the 2nd of February this time round. So... Whichever one of those is the, the first game after the transfer window closes, that's what we'll come back for. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, it's good to have a little look at those young players we've got coming in. And overall, I think our performance in that draw against Palace was decent enough. But if you did enjoy it, please drop a like on there for me. It helped me get seen by more people. And if you've got any comments about this episode, the series as a whole, how things are going with Luton, what you think about those youngsters, let me know in the comments section below. And of course, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, come and hop on the Greeno bus. There is plenty of room for you all. But it just remains for me to thank you for watching, and I will see you soon for some more action with Luton Town. Bye for now.